I'm going to show you how to disable and enable widgets in, in different ways. Uh, so here's, here's an example. I wanted to show you this. So watch this. I have a label here and I have an image beside it. And when I click on disable, it disables the label. And when I click on enable, it enables the, uh, the label. But the interesting part is notice that, that the image changes when I do this. And you might be thinking, well, you're probably just changing the image when the disable button is clicked and you're changing it back when the enable button is clicked. But I'm actually not doing that. It's something more automated than that. It's, I'll show you that in this video. Another thing that I'll show you later in this video is the following. So here I have a frame and within this frame, I have a check button and two buttons. And what I want to do is I want to click on disable and have all the widgets within that frame uh, change to a disabled state. But another thing that I'll show you later is how to disable widgets based on their type. I'll show you all of this here in this tutorial. Hi, my name is Jobin and I'm an open source developer. My channel is called Jobin Pi and it's all about Python and Linux. Welcome to Jobin Pi. Okay, so we have our window here and we have our label and two buttons. And again, what I want to happen is when I click on disable, I want to disable this label. And when I click on enable, I want to enable it back. So right now, nothing's happening because there's no code behind them. And this is the method that gets called when the enable button is clicked. And this is the method that gets called when the disable uh, button gets clicked. Okay, so we'll start with the disable button. So the names of my the name of my label is label underscore welcome and it's a TTK label. Okay, so the first option is I can do the following. So I can type the name of my label self.lbl underscore welcome dot configure and then state equal disabled. Okay, so let's run this and this obviously works. But I would recommend using the state method and then going like this, passing in a list with the word disabled in it. And that does the same thing. But this is the more modern way of disabling widgets uh, with TTK widgets. So this, this method works with uh, newer TTK widgets. And, and I always recommend using TTK widgets rather than TK widgets, unless it makes sense to use a TK widget. For example, um, a, a canvas widget is only a TK widget. There is no uh, TTK canvas widget. In cases like that, it makes sense. Uh, but for new applications, TTK widgets should be used. Again, unless there's a, a, a widget that doesn't exist in TTK like a canvas. Okay, so that's that's how you would disable the button. So you use the, the state button, the, uh, the state method. And then to enable it, I'm just going to go to the enable code here. I would do the same thing, except I would put not disabled. This is a not operator here. So disable and enable, and that works. But remember how I had an image shown here? So I, I want to show you that as well. So I have a couple of images. One of them is, is essentially this, uh, to, to show that the widget is, is, uh, disabled. And I have another one here to show that the widget is enabled. And this is just something I quickly drew up in Inkscape. Okay. So if I go back and I have these files saved as PNG files. So if I go back here, they're in the same folder as this test project. So here where, where I'm creating the, the, the frame that contains the label, I'm going to add a path to the, 
to the files, like the, the PNG files. So file underscore disable. And again, the file is right here in the same folder. Otherwise, I would put a an absolute path. And here, file enable equal enable.png. And again, these are just these images here. This is disable.png. This is enable.png. Okay, so the next step is I need to convert it to a photo image that TK Enter can use. So at the top, I'm going to also import photo image. And here I need to convert those to a to a photo image so we can use them. So self.img disable equal photo image, pass in the file, file disable, and we'll do the same thing here. Enable file equal file enable. Okay, so now the images are stored in these two variables. Now the, the neat part is I can do the following. I can go into here and type self.style equal TK, TTK style. So I'm creating a TTK style. And what I want to do is I want to run the map method on this. And I'm going to define my own custom style. So my custom label dot T label. So this is something that I just came up with now. This is my own name for my own type of label. And this is an actual TTK uh, label name. Uh, that's the name of the class. So I'm deriving from this. So I'm, I'm saying that my custom label is the same as T label with some adjustments. And those adjustments are image equal disabled. So I want to say here when when the state of the label is disabled, set the image to self.img disable. And actually I need to pass that in as a tuple like that. And the second part is when it's not disabled. I want to use self.img enable like that. Okay, so that's the name of my style. I need to pass that name of the style here in the TTK label that I'm defining. So style equal my custom label dot T label. Okay, let's run this and see how it works. So we can see that, so first of all, the text has disappeared and I'll show you how to get that back. But watch, when I click on disable, it changes to this. When I click on enable, it changes to that. But let's fix the uh, the label first. So I'll go to my label here and from here, I'm gonna type compound equal tk.left, which tells us where we would like the uh, image to appear. So we want the image to appear on the left-hand side and this causes the text to show up. Okay, so let's try that again. I click on disable, and it disables the label as usual. But check this out, it changed the image. And this is all being done automatically based on the style that I've defined here. And if I enable it, it changes back. So this is like really useful if you're creating, let's say, a wizard where, you know, like an installation where you click on next and you go over to like the next step. When you go over to the next step, you can have the the labels that show the steps to show a check mark as soon as they get disabled, which would mean that, you know, that step is complete. So instead of changing the image of the labels one by one, you can just tell it when the label is disabled, put this image when it's enabled, put the other image. So it's it's all uh, automated. And this is all being done with uh, TTK style. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is this window here. And again, I'm clicking on disable. It disables the widgets in the frame. I click on enable and then it enables everything in the frames. So let's see how this is done. Okay, so now there's no code behind the buttons. So now if I click on disable, enable, nothing happens. This check button 
And these two buttons are in the same frame. We have a frame here called frame underscore main. And within that, we have this check button and we have these two buttons all within this frame. These two buttons are in a different frame. So they have uh, nothing to do with each other here. Okay, so let's figure out how to disable all the widgets inside this frame without having to call those widgets one by one. So, you know, I can, I can tell this check button to disable itself and, you know, same thing with this and this one by one, but that would take too long, right? Like three widgets isn't too bad, but let's say if you have like 10 widgets, it's, uh, the, the code wouldn't be, you know, too nice to read. So for this, we can do the following. So the name of my frame is self.frame main. That's where those uh, widgets are contained in, that they're within this frame. So I can type for W, for W here, I'm referring to widget. For W in self.frame main.winfo children. Okay, and then print W. And what is W? W is a TTK widget. And this is a type hint so that my IDE knows what W is. So now if I type in W dot, it gives me suggestions. If I don't have that there, if I type W dot, nothing happens. My IDE has no idea what W is or what type of object it's going to be. So here we're helping it to to tell it that, okay, so W is a TTK widget. Okay, so let's try this and see what it gives us. Oh, actually I have some errors here. Uh, what's with all the underlines? Okay, so the indentation is off. Okay, it's back to normal. Okay, if I run this code, I click on disable we can see that it prints the addresses to those three widgets. Okay, so that's fine. So what I wanna do here is I want to type in w.state disabled. Okay, so let's disable all those widgets in, those, uh, in, the, in that frame. And that's exactly what it does. So all I had to do was use winful children, which returns the children of that frame of that container. Okay, so to enable them, uh, it would be the exact same way, except I would just put an exclamation mark here like that. So knowing that, maybe we should create a method that does that. So I'm gonna type in change widget state, and the default will be disable equal true. Or no, actually we'll turn this into a, a string. So state, and it's going to take in a string and I'm going to copy this code and put it into here. But instead of just passing in disabled, we'll pass in whatever that this passes in, you know, the state. So here, enable or disable the widgets in the main frame. And now we'll just call this. So self.change widget state, and we'll change it to disabled. So let's copy that and paste that here. And here we'll change it to not disabled on the enable button section. Okay, so let's just run that, make sure it works. It does. I can disable and enable widgets. But what if I wanted to disable only the buttons and not the check button? How would I do that? Well, for that, we can make a change in this for loop. So let me show you something. We can type in w.winfo underscore class on the widget. So on the widget, there is a method called winfo underscore class, and we need to call it. Watch what this will give us. This will give us the TTK class names of those widgets. So. In the TTK world, a check button is a T 
capital T, capital C, check button. And buttons are T button and T button. Yeah, so those are the actual class names. So we can type in here if w.winfo class equal T button, then make that change. So now it'll only apply the state change to buttons. And that's what it's doing. So that's basically how you can enable and disable states of TTK widgets and TK enter. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Uh, feel free to share your comments down in the comment section. Until the next tutorial, thanks for watching.